Welcome to the Seattle Video Voters Guide, your chance to hear directly from the candidates in the August primary. This is a vote by mail election. Instead of going to a polling place, ballots will be sent to all registered voters. In this edition, you'll hear from the candidates who will appear on the primary ballot for Seattle Mayor, Seattle City Attorney, the two at-large Seattle City Council positions, and two of the seven Seattle School Board positions. All offices included in this guide are nonpartisan. Only those positions where three or more candidates filed will appear on the primary ballot. Therefore, candidates for Seattle School Board District 7 will not appear on the primary ballot. Each of the statements is up to two minutes long and unedited. The candidates appear on your screen in the same order as they will on the ballot. First up, the Office of Seattle Mayor. The Mayor of the City of Seattle is the Chief Executive Officer of the City and is responsible for enforcing city and state law, city contracts, and maintaining order. The Mayor appoints department heads, subject to City Council approval, and manages the Executive Branch of City Government. The Mayor has the authority to veto ordinances passed by the City Council, and the Council may override such vetoes by a two-thirds majority vote. The Mayor is elected for a four-year term. The top two vote-getters in August will advance to the general election in November. I am a queer, black, and Latino architect, a housing activist, and a high-risk individual. In March 2020, when the pandemic began, my small business contracts fell through. In June, I heard the sounds of helicopters and flashbangs as residents marched in my neighborhood in the name of Black Lives Against State-Sponsored Violence. In September, during the worst wildfires the West Coast has ever seen, an orange sky with smoke seeped through the cracks of my old windows. As I read, the city had 95 shelter spaces for 5,500 people. In Seattle, we have a strong mayor system. That means the mayor controls whether the city chooses to act or not in the midst of an economic crisis, a housing crisis, and the climate crisis. The inaction thus far in Seattle is unacceptable. I am running for mayor in this moment because for too long, career politicians and lawyers have said the right things without doing them. No more empty promises. I will fulfill our Seattle Green New Deal, say no to sweeping our unhoused neighbors, reform and defund our police to create true public safety and build the housing that we need. Most of our problems come down to housing justice, where homes are allowed to be or aren't, how many we have or don't, and how much they cost. Creating a system is the first step on a new path to achieving so much of what we want. I understand our systems and can make it more sustainable quickly while ensuring community comes first. If you're looking for a candidate with clear plans who is committed to serving two terms so that we can finally be the city that we say we are, then I am your candidate. It is time for a mayor of action. Seattle is a beautiful city suffering from a dreadful lack of leadership, bickering, Finger pointing and ideological posturing have hurt our residents and undermine our national reputation. I have a plan to bring people together, create a more fair and sustainable future, build working coalitions, and strive for equity and rise above the infighting and inertia that have held our city back for so long. It is way past time to stop talking about our problems and start taking steps to solve them. For 30 years, I have used my skills as a political scientist and economic development practitioner to create jobs and bring people together. I am an entrepreneur who has held leadership positions with businesses, nonprofit organizations, federal and state lawmakers, local mayors, public-private partnerships, and educational institutions. My background and experience fully prepare me to lead Seattle at this critical moment. As recovery from the pandemic gets underway, now is, is an excellent time to reassess how our city does business. City can, Seattle can be a model of, effectiveness, of effectiveness, sustainability, and accountability to its citizens. Becoming that new model requires a new attitude of responsibility at City Hall. I have developed a platform detailing my plan to address some of Seattle's biggest challenges, dignity and housing options for people experiencing homelessness, 
turbocharging our economic recovery, increasing public safety, and mitigating climate change, to name just a few. My platform is an investment in our people, our culture, and our future. Seattle was at a crossroads. Our next mayor would either set us on a bold new course for responsible leadership or simply continue business as usual. We cannot afford another four years of talking and not taking action. I am ready to chart a new course to provide transformational leadership for a transforming city. I ask for your vote to be Seattle's next mayor. I'm Lorena Gonzalez. I'm a first-time mom and a proud first-generation American. I grew up as a migrant farm worker in central Washington. I worked my way through community college, WSU, and Seattle University Law School. As a civil rights attorney, I won cases for victims of sexual assault, wage theft, elder abuse, and police misconduct and brutality. I ran for office six years ago after seeing how hard things were becoming for many Seattleites, especially workers and people of color. Housing is too expensive. Wages are too low. Big corporations have too much say. Police are not being held accountable nearly enough. As the first Latina elected citywide, I've brought people together to start providing safe spaces for those without homes. We've expanded pre-K and doubled preschool slots. We've helped Seattle's small businesses and families survive the pandemic, and we've begun to demilitarize the police. I want a Seattle that's livable for everyone. We can be a city that brings people together to solve the root causes of homelessness, like inequality, housing costs, and poverty. One where black and brown people don't fear police brutality. A city of connected, livable, safe neighborhoods that all have affordable childcare, good public schools, safe parks, and modern public transit. With housing and rent everyone can afford, not just the wealthy where all kinds of businesses can grow in every neighborhood and all jobs pay a living wage. This is the really hard and necessary work of the next mayor. I have the track record and the relationships with the city council, labor, small businesses, and members of the community to boldly lead our progressive city so that it's once again the vibrant city we all love. Truly a Seattle for all. I ask for your vote to be Seattle's next mayor. I'm Casey Sixkiller. I grew up in Seattle and I'm raising three young kids here. I'm running for mayor so every family has a future in Seattle. This past year was one of the most challenging in our city's history. Despite great wealth and opportunity, too many families are being left behind. Our neighborhoods are struggling with empty storefronts, homelessness, and crime. Instead of coming together to meet these challenges, we're being held back by divisions. I've spent my career advancing practical, progressive solutions at every level of government. I've formed partnerships to create new housing and shelters, expand access to parks, advance equity by dismantling institutional barriers, and secured millions of dollars to restore critical habitat, replace failing bridges, and invest in high-capacity transit. Growing up in Seattle, we didn't agree on everything, but we've found ways to make progress on important issues. Now is our opportunity to rebuild a stronger and more equitable Seattle with fresh ideas and bold actions. As mayor, I will pilot a guaranteed basic income program so working families of any income level can build futures here, help our small businesses recover from the pandemic, expand and make childcare more affordable, invest in our neighborhoods so they are safe and thriving, and restore our parks and streets to their intended uses by adding 3,000 new places for people experiencing homelessness to call home. I'm the only candidate with experience running large organizations. I know firsthand that change requires vision and partnership. This moment demands a leader who will sit down with those on the other side of an issue to find common ground and move us all forward. I'll work every day to show our kids we can achieve the future we all want for Seattle. I would be honored to have your vote. My name is Dr. Bliss. As your mayor, I will act with vision, courage, and compassion. I've spent my career as a medical leader developing sustainable systems that provide compassionate care for all. As a leader, I understand that core values of civil rights and police accountability can never be safely negotiated away. In 2019, the Ninth Circuit Court ruled that charging a person with vagrancy when they have nowhere else to go is cruel and unusual punishment 
and a violation of their civil rights. In response, our city allows living in tent encampments and promotes policies encouraging theft, vandalism, and violent crimes as a way to meet basic needs. The Seattle Police Department has been under a federal decree since 2012 for repeatedly violating our civil rights. Our police union contract protects rogue police officers from disciplinary action and prosecution. In 2019, the federal court found the city remains in violation. The city has no timeline for resolution. We need solutions. Protecting civil rights is non-negotiable. If elected, I would immediately provide basic emergency food, shelter, security, and treatment to our residents who have no other options, permanently remove tent dwellers from city parks, and nullify any section of the police union contract that limits accountability and oversight. Join me in solidarity. Vote for wise action. Vote Dr. Bliss for mayor. I'm Bobby Tucker, Seattle's next mayor, a leader who cares, a leader who will listen to your voices, a God-fearing man, leader with integrity, building a team to house those that are in shelters and unsheltered, education that will build character and confidence in our children, securing the future for our children uh, look for, so they can look forward to their future, public safety that makes sense, creating a healthy environment for businesses, what has happened in Seattle in the past could have been prevented with effective leadership. Regardless of what has happened, can now be fixed with me and a team <clears throat> that is serious and cares about Seattle nights. There is nothing new under the sun. Nehemiah 1, Nehemiah asked certain men of Judea concerning the Jews that had escaped, which were left to the captivity concerning Jerusalem. When they had shared with Nehemiah of the broken down walls and uh, Nehemiah sat down and wept and mourned because Nehemiah cared. Nehemiah 2.8.10, then I told of the hand of God, which <clears throat> is good upon me. Also the king's word that he had spoken unto me. And they said, let us rise up and build. So they strengthened their hands for this good work. Let us come together, Seattle Knights, and succeed. Bobby Tucker for Seattle's Mayor. Hi, I'm James Donaldson, a former Seattle Supersonic local business owner and a 40-year resident of the city. Today, I lead a nonprofit serving at-risk youth with a focus on mental health awareness and suicide prevention. As your next mayor, I will restore trust in our police, bring more compassion and accountability to the homelessness crisis, and promote more affordable housing. The current city government is just failing to address the challenges we all know are so important. I looked to other successful cities for answers. In Newark, New Jersey, they chose to reform their police, not defund. In the last year, not a single officer has fired their gun. That's a remarkable success and one we can learn from. In Vienna, they encourage both private and high quality public housing. Vienna also does a better job in connecting homeless to the addiction and mental health services. Compassion and accountability. As a lifelong Democrat, I'm right there with the voters of the city. 71% of Seattleites support reforming the police, not defunding. 72% of the voters favor my plan to reduce homelessness by increasing access to mental health and addiction services. 56% of the voters agree with me that we need more affordable housing. The remarkable issue is how few Seattle politicians agree with the Seattle voters. Seattle politics is often a fight between well-funded special interest groups who drive our council to the extreme. Across America, Seattle has used as an example of what not to do. We'll fix that. After addressing these three big issues, I have one project that's near and dear to my heart. Save our Sonics and get our team back. I'm James Donaldson, former Seattle Supersonic, lifelong Democrat, and your choice for mayor. Hello friends. Do you think Seattle's better off today than it was 10 years ago? Do you feel vulnerable members of our community have the support they need to improve their lives? 
Do you feel safer? Do you feel downtown represents the spirit of Seattle? There's only one honest answer to all these questions, no. Our homelessness crisis is getting worse. Downtown is deteriorating. Businesses are closing. Residents feel unsafe. Roads need repairs. And no current city leader is taking responsibility. That's why I'm running for Seattle mayor. My name is Art Langley, and I'm not a more of the same candidate. I'll take Seattle down a different path, starting by taking responsibility for solving our homelessness crisis, restoring a vibrant downtown, reforming public safety, and rebuilding infrastructure. I'm the only candidate with a comprehensive plan to end our homelessness emergency. I will increase mental health and recovery services in triage centers and rapidly create housing with critical wraparound services to break the cycle of homelessness. Seattle's breakdown of public safety, crumbling roads, and declining downtown are all symptoms of a serious problem. Our current leaders no longer prioritize delivering basic government services with excellence. I am the only candidate who understands that city government must get the basics right, from fixing potholes to keeping us safe. I'm ready to take responsibility and get to work for you. But you have an important choice to make. Will you choose more of the same, or will you choose a path toward recovery? My name is Art Langley, and I would be honored to earn your vote. I know that together, we can do better. Seattle is a great city, but our leaders are failing us. City Hall has become dysfunctional. Thousands are sleeping outside. Housing is unaffordable. Small businesses are going under. Police reform has failed. The middle class gets squeezed harder every day. We're all exhausted by Seattle politicians saying the right thing, but not doing the right thing when it matters. I've been doing hard things that matter my whole life. I've spent the last seven years fighting for our homeless Native community as executive director at the Chief Seattle Club. We're building $180 million in affordable housing. We're innovating surplus trailers on parking lots called Eagle Village, modular housing in Lake City, 200 family units with a longhouse, and we're succeeding. During the pandemic, we moved entire encampments from the International District and Pioneer Square to the safety of hotel rooms. I'm leading. I have a 22-point emergency housing action plan to bring everyone sleeping outside into safety in four 14 months following the election. You can see my plan at my website. As a longtime community police advocate, I'm done with racism and brutality with zero consequences. As a community police commissioner, we fought to block the current police union contract, but the mayor and council buckled, rolling back reforms on racial bias and violating the federal consent decree. Seattle's next mayor will hire a new police chief and negotiate a new police contract, determining the future of reform. You can see my plan at my website. Affordable housing, racial justice, equitable recovery, climate change, transit, education, the West Seattle Bridge. We have so much important work ahead of us. It's time for a new generation of leadership in Seattle. I believe in this city. If you'll believe in me, together we can make Seattle the city we all love. Hello, I'm Donnell Rivers, your candidate for mayor of Seattle. The condition of our city is critical. We are in the middle of redefining our lives in the present and what it will become in the future. Seattle citizens are strong, hardworking, and caring people. We are devoted to accepting change for the better. Now is that time. We must develop bold leaders. We must listen to each other and together change negatives to positives for the present and our future. Yes, we have work to do. Know this, homeless must not exist in Seattle. I will reconstruct our police department because black lives do matter. We are the city of destiny, a place where quality lives will always be developed. I will pledge to develop a new stream of revenue. I will work hard to create new leaders skilled with the three L's, the ability to listen, learn, and then lead. We are a city destined to become culturally competent of one another's needs, desires to prosper. We will monitor our environment and create appropriate change necessary. We will remember our indigenous tribes and their desire to work to move forward. We will find new locations for our preschool children and their care. I look forward to developing our disaster and pandemic readiness program. I will look forward to working with our youth and the young adults 
to develop a program that will keep dangerous drivers off our streets and freeways. I need your vote, your support. The change is here. I'm Donnell Rivers. Black Lives Do Matter. Seattle is starving for effective leadership, a mayor who makes no excuses and acts with urgency. I will unite our communities around our progressive values to make real progress on the challenges we face. My father was one of City Life's first black union linemen. My Japanese mother was cruelly interned during World War II. Their fight for equity and justice informed my legal career, standing up for workers and small businesses. It drives my public service to work for you. The homelessness crisis must be our first priority. Finger pointing is frustrating and inhumane. As mayor, no more excuses. I will take charge and take responsibility for action. Here's my plan. Real action to accelerate current city spending and secure $140 million in federal relief funds to provide immediate housing and services. And clean up our parks and school properties and sidewalks. Our plan, our outcomes, our progress will be accessible to you by a click of a button so you know we're making progress every day. Next, we must unite around an economic recovery for all assisting downtown and neighborhood small businesses, and establishing a Seattle job center connecting people to careers. I led the $15 minimum wage discussion. Now I will expand child care and build housing and transit so working people and families can continue to call the city our home. We will improve public safety and build trust in our police, changing SBD's tactics and their culture. I sponsored Seattle's first anti-bias police law. Let's reimagine policing, not threaten defunding, and keep all communities safe. I'm grateful so many have endorsed me. Governor Gary Locke, Seattle Mayors Norm Rice, and Wes Ullman's, Wes Ullman, unions like the Transit Union 587 and construction and trade members, members from the NWCP and leaders from the NWCP, faith leaders and business owners, so many more. I'd be honored to earn your vote for a better Seattle. Hi, I'm Stan Littman, and I'm running for mayor of Seattle, and I ask for your support. I still believe Seattle will be the city of the future. All the pieces are here, but not integrated. How do we retain our uniqueness, but by realizing Denny's dream on the beach at Alki? The elements have laid dormant since the hippie 60s. The Space Needle, the monorail, the Western Tower, the elements of Sky City, like in the Jetsons, 12-story Weston segment, 12 condos per floor, between four and 500 feet. The Space Needle cost five million silver dollars in 1960. That's a hundred million dollars today. With advanced construction cost methods, 2,000 Space Needle condos, 288,000 units of city-owned affordable housing spread a mile apart in a hexagonal pattern. This, these Space Needles also form a new transportation grid at the 100-foot level. Monorail suspended between the towers will fly you around the city. Priority will be given to families of school-aged children. For Seattle to prosper in the future, children must come first. Since there's going to be a teacher crisis in September, parents can elect to establish a quarter million dollar educational trust fund, which can be invested in city-owned projects such as the Space Needle condos or city-like green energy projects. The first project will be a dark energy thermal engine from Brilliant Light Power to heat climate change arena with virtually free zero-point energy. For the grid, vehicle to grid will blanket the city, allowing low-cost EV ownership for everyone. Also, I will pay city bills in U.S. silver dollars, propose dual currency laws for business, and establish a copper brick monetary base in the form of a copper pyramid next to the Space Needle. I'm Stan Litman, and I believe in Seattle. If you want to double the economy and grow into the next decade of, of wealth and prosperity for all of us, please elect me mayor of Seattle in August 3rd primary and November. A just, equitable, and thriving Seattle is possible, but we must come together with a common purpose to make it a reality. City Hall politicians have tried and failed to address the crises our city faces, especially on homelessness. We need new leadership with a fresh perspective, but also a proven track record of delivering real results. 
I'm Jessen Farrell, the only candidate with the proven ability to bridge divides and build the coalitions needed to tackle our toughest problems. As executive director of the Nonprofit Transportation Choices Coalition, I help transform mass transit in the Puget Sound region. As a state legislator, I work to improve people's lives by leading and passing landmark paid family leave, creating more affordable housing, and securing billions for light rail expansion, all while dealing with our Republican-controlled Senate. Governor Inslee chose me to lead the state's COVID Economic Recovery Task Force for a reason. I know how to solve problems. Under my leadership, we secured $50 million for small businesses left out of federal pandemic relief. As a single mom with three kids in public schools, I understand the urgent need to better support working families. I'll make sure every kid in every neighborhood has safe parks, streets, and sidewalks, and is free from the threat of gun violence. All prioritizing adding all types of housing, including services, ensuring people can access the mental and health treatments they need and get help finding work. I'll build 70,000 more affordable homes and get the city back on track delivering basic services. I'm proud to be endorsed by progressive elected officials, small business owners, and community leaders. I'm a born and raised Seattleite, attended Shoreline Public Schools, and went on to the UW and then to law school. If you, like me, are tired of excuses and empty promises and want a leader who will hit the ground running, stop the infighting, and deliver results, then I hope you will vote for me to be your next mayor. Our democracy is in peril, and we are in the midst of a mental health emergency. Therefore, in times of crisis, sacrifice is needed, which is why I'm offering my services as mayor of Seattle. I'm a strong leader who can communicate important ideas and take a completely different approach to these 21st century issues. I have the right temperament for the complexity of the job. I'm a minister, military war veteran, and founder of the nonprofit public charity called Balance Due. My personality is empathetic, compassionate, stern, and unrelenting. I can inform, connect, and inspire the community in an amazing way. My belief? If we have a laser sharp focus on our mutual obstacles, together we can overcome and have a more robust return to our common bond of normalcy. My vision for Seattle, economic harmony. We want to streamline economic recovery, balance the budget, create a more sustainable future, and more racial equity. My belief, with hope and optimism, we can create a new vitality one that translates into a better quality of life for all of Seattle. I envision the Emerald City shining again, illuminating even stronger and louder. I see an enhanced beauty with the people of Seattle reveling in the newfound prosperity and vibrance of the city. So in conclusion, I implore the people of Seattle to help me help you by voting for democracy, by voting for change, by voting for a new energy by voting for me, Rodney Hope, your next mayor of Seattle. Seattle City Attorney. The city attorney is the head of the law department and appoints all assistant city attorneys, city prosecutors, and other department staff. The city attorney supervises and controls litigation in which the city or any of its departments is a party. The city attorney also provides legal counsel to all city departments and to elected and appointed officials. The city attorney is elected for a four-year term. I'm Ann Davison, and I'm running for Seattle city attorney because our city must reconcile that it is failing to meet the needs of the most vulnerable, as well as the basic functions of protecting public health and safety. When I moved to Seattle in 1996 for a job in the Sonics front office, our city had found a way to meet those needs. Before my first child was born in 2008, walking to the courthouse downtown was safe. But by the time I had my second child in 2011, our streets were becoming dangerous. Now, employees and jurors are told not to use the main entrance because it's so unsafe. The same can be said for many of our neighborhoods. My kids began to ask questions about why people were living alongside Seattle's roadways in unconscionable conditions less humane than in a UN Cambodian refugee camp where I worked with people fleeing civil war. Even our children know what's happening in our city isn't right. The city attorney is a critical link to public safety, 
downtown and in our neighborhoods, deciding when to prosecute many types of criminal activity. I will provide balanced leadership that makes us smart on crime, proactive, not reactive. I will be a collaborative leader, bringing compassion, seeking progress, and establishing working relationships within our city and region to restore public safety. I'm proud to be endorsed by retired Seattle Municipal Court Judge Ed McKenna, former King County Prosecutor Chris Bailey, Seattle Opera Board member Louise Miller, and Tom Hansen, a Seattle author decades in recovery. You can see more endorsements at NeighborsForAnn.com. By fixing this critical link of public health and safety, we begin to see improvement in the livability of our city. With your vote, we can create a safer, more compassionate city for all of us. My name is Nicole Thomas Kennedy, and I'm running for city attorney. In my years as a public defender, I witnessed up close how the city wastes millions of dollars every year prosecuting BIPOC, the poor, and the disabled. We need a sharp pivot away from these reactive and punitive models. They clearly aren't solving Seattle's most glaring problems. My office will instead focus on solutions to larger problems in order to fulfill the promises of our city charter, to protect and enhance the health safety, environment, and general welfare of our people. While the county deals with serious felonies, the city attorney only deals with misdemeanors, low level or petty crime. I have witnessed hungry people prosecuted for stealing food and unsheltered people prosecuted for things like stealing socks. This is not money well spent. The war on drugs is an expensive failure. Money spent criminalizing drug possession should go into community-based diversion and harm reduction programs, staffed by people who best understand these complex issues of public health. By isolating and destabilizing people for petty crime, the current city attorney has undermined the very things that create public safety. We must stop prosecuting the vast majority of misdemeanors and streamline the budget so these wasted millions can be reinvested back into the community. As Seattle's attorney, I will work to stop the sweeps and overturn the apartment ban. I will aggressively protect tenants' rights and workers from wage theft. My office will undertake litigation that challenges the ban on rent control and affirmative action. Seattle should be a national leader on climate justice. We must divest all city pensions from fossil fuel corporations and break ties with the banks that fund them. We must instead invest in environmentally responsible companies that will grow as the world changes. I'm Nicole Thomas Kennedy, and I'm running for Seattle City Attorney because we don't need to choose between punishment and safety. The people of Seattle deserve a candidate with new yet practical solution to our city's most critical problems, built on a foundation of justice and equity. Hi, I'm Pete Holmes, your elected city attorney. As Seattle recovers from the pandemic and addresses critical issues of policing, criminal legal reform, and turnover at City Hall, I'm proud to provide consistent, principled, and progressive leadership for our city at a time when we need it most. Seattle elects an independent city attorney to provide important checks and balances with the mayor and council and advocate for the people of our city. Our office prosecutes misdemeanor crimes and supports victims impacted by domestic violence, drunk driving, and assaults. We lead on police reform and hold powerful corporations accountable. Now is not the time for an untested voice in this vital office. We partner with proven diversion programs to help people afflicted with addiction, behavioral health issues, and poverty to get treatment and support instead of cycling through jail. We're removing firearms from our streets and fighting for stronger gun laws at every level. As the former chair of the OPA Review Board, police reform is close to my heart. I've personally led our decade-long partnership with the Department of Justice to reduce excessive force at the Seattle Police Department and earn the praise of the federal monitor. But we have more work ahead with a new mayor next year, searching for a new chief and bargaining a new police contract. We tackled equity priorities like vacating marijuana convictions, fought Trump's racist immigration policies, and defeated Tim Iman's attacks on transit. Now. We are defending our right to tax wealthy corporations, hold polluters accountable, and keep people housed post-pandemic. I'm honored to have the endorsement of progressive leaders like Attorney General Bob Ferguson, Prosecutor Satterberg, City and County Council members, state legislators, the Alliance for Gun Responsibility, MLK Labor Council, local Democratic groups, and many more. I'd appreciate your vote. Seattle City Council. The Seattle City Council is the legislative branch of government. 
Members set the city's direction by enacting ordinances and passing resolutions. The council authorizes expenditures, adopts regulations, levies taxes, controls the finances and property of the city, and performs many related legislative tasks. Of the nine city council positions, two, position eight and position nine, are at large, representing the entire city for a term of four years. Positions one through seven each represent different areas of the city. Only the two at-large council positions are up for election this year. The top two vote-getters in each position will advance to the general election in November. The remaining seven council positions will be on the ballot in 2023. All voters in Seattle can vote in the at-large city council races. Twenty years ago, I ran for city council. At that time, I proposed an initiative titled Vision 2000. Other proposals I made, you will find at georgefreeman.com. Two have been enacted. Police officers and vehicles have cameras, although at the times they still turn those cameras off. I also proposed a bridge crossing at Lander and First Avenue. After 20 years, that bridge has finally been completed. I represent visionary ventures. I build restaurants and nightclubs. Seattle is the Emerald City. It is said that change comes from the bottom for the Emerald City. And given the problems that we face, those problems grow and our decisions work their way up to the state, nation, and our planet. I intend to speak to those issues and the problems that we face through the initiative that I have proposed. I believe that we need to add to the Seattle Center a new image. I believe that we need to look at our health care problems and that we do something similar to the Bookmobile mobile bus health centers. I think that we need to move our homeless people into uh, areas that are parks which uh, have security and health care and showers. Uh, we need to have transportation back for those. The people that live in Seattle, once a building is uh, in the market of being sold, I think the city should back that up with mortgage loans at a low cost and let those people live there. Um, I also think that we need more police officers. I do not believe that we should defund our police department, and especially women. Women are half of this society, and we need half of the police department to be women. Hello, my name is Jordan Elizabeth Fisher, and I'm running for Seattle City Council Position 8. Our community has a lot of concerns regarding police accountability, budget restraints, homeless crisis, addiction, health care, the eviction moratorium expiring right before winter, and finally affordable housing. My experience as a mortgage lender and advocate for the homeless community gave me a comprehensive understanding of how money circulates, federal and state finance laws, core practices of the real estate industry that inhibit affordable housing, and how nonprofits operate. First and foremost, we need to centralize our resources to aid, audit ineffective nonprofits, and get them organized working together. With affordable housing, we can incentivize a more co-op style ownership of living in which a pool of renters have a fractional ownership of, let's say, a condo building. These owners would be able to set fair rental prices versus an investor by an equitable voting system and could assign their own requirements to occupy the space, such as removing the need for a credit check. Additionally, renters would now have an affordable way to build equity and wealth. My platform is centered around the concept of putting the government on the blockchain. This is one of the most innovative technologies ever created. We can program our money with accounting features that would audit the effectiveness of our taxes, the city budget, political contributions, and even nonprofits. Blockchain allows for the streamlining of government resources like unemployment, rental assistance, grants, and aid, resulting in funds being more readily accessible. I want to give the people a voice on how their dollars are being spent. 
Cryptocurrency is fun, but blockchain is where the revolution is. I'm asking for your vote, and I think that I can be a very effective, powerful, and innovative voice of leadership for our community. Visit my website for more details. Hi, Seattle. I'm Bobby Lindsay, a candidate for Seattle City Council, position eight. I've been given two minutes to introduce myself, so here it is. <laughs> I'm from Louisville, Kentucky, and I moved to Seattle a little over three years ago. With no friends, no family supporting me, my only option was to live in my car. I worked two jobs, showered at the gym, and actually used a cooler on the back seat of my floor's back seat as a refrigerator. What I thought would be temporary lasted 22 months, no breaks, or temporary housing in between. During that time, I cleared up all my debts, raised my credit score, and then I was able to secure housing. I love to tell that story because it shows nothing is impossible with a little determination and a lot of hard work. Sometimes we encounter difficult situations in life that push us to become the person we know we're supposed to be. My situation prepared me for this position. While homeless, I lived what most fear, what many discuss and most try not to think about. I have a different perspective on our city's issues from actual, on the ground, lived experience. I'm the person we need, Seattle, and I humbly ask for your support. Thank you for your time and have a good day. Hi, Seattle. My name is Brian Fahey, and I've been a trade worker my entire working life. I started in the HVAC trade when I was 13, helping my neighbor start his business and assisting with install work throughout my summer vacations. I did this until I moved to Seattle in 2003. Since moving here, I've continued my career in the HVAC trade to the point of managing multiple Class A high-rise operations in downtown. Because of this, I am very familiar with the benefits of preventive actions rather than reactive. I am running for Seattle City Council because I feel we need pragmatic leaders who use tried and true, fact-based approaches to sensitive and emotional issues to ensure the best possible outcomes. I believe that campaign finance is one of the largest issues we face in a representative democracy. I feel that all constituency-based races should have to use our democracy voucher program. Our leaders need to be beholden to, the be, be beholden to the people, not the corporate donors. I also believe that we as a city should do more for ourselves when it comes to education funding. In my opinion, education funding should be permanent and tied to progressive BNO taxes to reduce the burden on surrounding areas and eliminate the need for levies. Your children deserve better than the unstable system that we give them. In terms of some of the social issues hitting our city right now, Again, I believe the pragmatic and evidence-based approach is the best. We need a police force that respects our city and its views. We also need a police force that our city respects. Accountability is what is missing to allow good police to flourish. We should also do more to encourage Seattle residents to become police in the city that they call home. Hello, my name is Jesse James and I am running for Seattle City Council position eight. I have noticed as of late many people's discouragement with the Democratic Party and yet, I don't think the Republican Party is quite the voice we're looking for either. Fortunately, I don't consider myself a part of either of these overbloated, inefficient associations. I'm not a fringe activist, nor am I a career politician. I'm a voice for the people, pure and simple. The main, reason, the main issue I would like to address is that of our beloved democracy voucher program and how the current regulations give incumbents and career politicians an advantage over the grassroots candidates the program is supposed to help support. The current requirement citywide candidates like myself need to meet before they can receive a single voucher is $410 donations from Seattle voters. The problem is, of course, anyone with an established base can fill this requirement much quicker than the unknown grassroots candidates it's supposed to support. It's because of this that not a single city council member or mayor has been unseated since the start of this program, and for this reason I am not participating in the democracy voucher program out of protest, as I believe citizens should have the freedom to give their vouchers to any candidate on the ballot. Other issues I am an advocate for are the legalization and taxations of card rooms, an end to the sweetened beverage tax, clearing encampments near our schools, and the city's general support in rebuilding our small business community. In closing, if you are looking for change and value a practical, reasonable, hardworking, and efficient individual looking out for you, I may just be your candidate. Thank you and good day. 
My name is Kenneth Wilson and I'm running for Seattle City Council 8. I'm a licensed bridge structural engineer with 30 years experience working on transportation and infrastructure projects and own a small business since 2005. I completed my master's degree in civil engineering at UW and I'm a proud resident of Seattle for over 28 years. Having lived in West Seattle and now in the Wallingford Green Lake neighborhood with my wife and two daughters, I have a strong appreciation for the city's many distinct neighborhoods. This past year has taught me important lessons and is the reason I am running. I, I'm reminded, it reminded me of the value of family. It showed me once again the ingenuity of American science and manufacturing with Ford and GE quickly switching to medical devices, while our scientists were first to produce mass testing and viable vaccines. Unfortunately, it also demonstrated to me that our incumbent representatives do not hold our interests and needs first. Instead, often focusing on political projects, we need a better council. Our council failed us with homeless, our infrastructure, including cutting the West Seattle access and our safety. I will not defund our police and instead promise to support and work with them to better serve Seattle. Our city is an old mature city and the infrastructure needs to be updated and upgraded. This includes power, utility systems, sewer mains, water, and our city's bridges and roads. West Seattle access must be restored and open now, not in 2022. We've analyzed it, we understand it better, and there are usage opportunities. We need homeless solutions that are not just temporary shelter, but real actions that correct addictions and mental problems, such as an 18 to 24 month transition housing with social services. As your council member, it's my intention to build on our strengths, restore rational decisions, and to assure progress follow up. I have the ability, energy, and expertise to restore Seattle to the city we want. I would appreciate your vote. My name is Paul Felipe Glumez. I was born in Mexico and have lived in Seattle for 41 years. I am running for Seattle City Council, position eight, in order to stop the transformation of the city that I love into an impoverished, crime-ridden, and drug-infested slum. I'm doing this because no other candidate has come forward to say what must be said or to exhibit the personal courage and commitment to do what is needed to be done. The primary cause of this transformation of Seattle is a combination of wrong policies and gross mismanagement by the current city council. This includes the defunding of law enforcement and enabling nonprofits to promote a growing billion dollar a year homeless industrial complex, replete with safe injection sites and free drugs. My first priority is to restore to Seattle a fully funded public safety system. This includes creating the conditions where the homeless are forced off the streets into emergency transitional shelters. From there, the individual problems of the homeless person can be defined, and that person can be forwarded to substance abuse treatment, psychological care, or work counseling. The future of the Seattle area rests on building an advanced 21st century science and technology manufacturing hub for the world. Unfortunately, Seattle's future has been severely jeopardized by the current city council. If you want a future for Seattle, vote Paul Felipe Glumez, position eight. Sie heil, Seattle Komi Nazi fascist. Sie heil, Seattle Consul and Mayor, are fascist and clown. Our crazy Nazi Gestapo garbage rats from Animal Farm. I am Alex Zimmerman, speak to you. Seattle Emerald degenerate super smart freaking idiot with Nazi socialist democrat and anti-Semite principle. Clean dirty stupid council chamber from this clown, criminal and killer. This cannot go on forever. Stand up Seattle, stand up America. We the people need to elect intelligent civilized businessmen who can bring Seattle back to normal life, who feel stop the crook who suck blood and money from us and make us life miserable, who will have Q&A every month with the people in each district, who does not scared to talk to the people frankly and honestly, who is not a fascist, sexopath or lunatic, who is American and respect and restore our constitution, love and freedom of speech, who is not scared 
to open better lady rooms in City Hall one day per week for citizen conversation in Hannes Candidate Forum for Everybody. We need to stop Nazi Socialist Democrat Mafia with progressive Gestapo principle which have brought Seattle to number one fascist city in America in total collapse. Only pure idiots don't understand so one party system is always fascism. We need to clean our government from dirty garbage rats who drink from fat Catholic. Stand up, Seattle. Stand up, America. It's time for real changes. Emerging from this pandemic, we have an opportunity to come together, to roll up our sleeves and build a stronger, more equitable Seattle. I'm Teresa Mosqueda, and I've dedicated my career to building coalitions and getting results by bringing together diverse perspectives and passing progressive policies that challenge the status quo. In my first term here at Seattle City Council, with your help, we passed progressive policies to make Seattle more equitable and just. I led the coalition and passed the Jumpstart Progressive Revenue Proposal to bring in over $214 million a year for investments in housing and small businesses in equitable development and Green New Deal priorities. I passed wage and leave standards for app-based drivers, made sure that our hotel workers had health care and workplace protections, and during COVID, made sure that our grocery workers had hazard pay. I led on the Domestic Workers Bill of Rights that is now a national model for other cities. And we addressed the climate crisis by passing energy efficiency standards for city buildings and funding more housing within the city of Seattle. In the wake of COVID, I hope to continue to do this important work with your support. I hope to return to council with your vote and make sure that we can continue to invest in workers and small businesses, address environmental crisis, as well as make sure that we're addressing the health and stability for all Seattleites. I will fight for more affordable housing across our city, for police accountability and upstream investments, making sure that we invest in homeless prevention strategies and ensure that workers and small businesses have the support they need for a more equitable Seattle post-COVID. I hope you'll join me and support my campaign for re-election. Please join individuals like Representative Jayapal, Attorney General Bob Ferguson, labor unions from across this county, including SEIU, Teamsters, UFCW, so many environmental justice groups like the Sierra Club and Washington Conservation Voters, and folks fighting for women's rights, LGBT rights, and health care justice. It's been an honor to serve you. My name is Kate Martin. I'm a planning and design consultant and an affordable housing provider. I know we agree that Seattle needs better government, and that is why I'm challenging the incumbent and the status quo. As pressing problems go unsolved while bigger and bigger budgets are consumed, my heart breaks. This is my town for 42 years. I raised my family here, have my business here, and have worked shoulder to shoulder with fellow volunteers from one end of this city to the other for decades. It's clear that things are actually getting worse. Homelessness, support for the mentally ill and addicted, public safety, and affordable housing are all crises. We, the taxpayers, are doing our part, voting for higher taxes with the promise it will help, but those promises have been broken. Why does the council keep failing? Why do we, the voters, accept these failures? I see a few answers. First, democracy is under attack in our city. Special interest power is too great and elections have become squabbles between the city's most powerful groups. We must fully recognize the district-level democracy we voted for in 2013. District-level plans and electing district council members to shepherd those plans will make all of the difference. Second, there's too little intellectual and professional diversity on the council. Today, it's an echo chamber that can't even notice it's failing. I'll bring debate, professional problem-solving skills, and a focus on proven solutions. Seattle's history is great, and it wasn't that long ago that we were safer, healthier, and better housed. While we can't fix these problems overnight, it's time we recompose the council to get Seattle on track. Please visit electkatemartin.com and theseattlejournal.com to learn more. I ask for your vote and truly cannot wait to serve you as the next Position 8 Seattle City Council member Thank you for your consideration.
My name is Brianna Thomas and I'm running for Seattle City Council position nine because I'm ready to lead on the policies our city needs to move forward. I am proud to have led successful efforts that put Seattle at the national forefront of workers' rights, livable wages, and police accountability, from inside City Hall and in the community as an advocate and an organizer. For over a decade, I've invested time and energy in this community. I managed the Yes for SeaTac campaign that won the first $15 minimum wage in the country. I led honest elections, which brought just democracy vouchers that fuel our campaigns with people power instead of corporate influence. I am a proud progressive and a proud Democrat. I moved to Seattle in 2004 when I was 23 years old. I found an apartment in the Admiral Junction and a couple of jobs to make ends meet. I was able to chase my dreams in this city because opportunity was abundant. I'm deeply concerned that those opportunities are moving quickly away, particularly for people of color and working families. From my childhood growing up in a trailer park in rural Georgia, volunteering at our neighborhood soup kitchen, to negotiating police accountability legislation as chief of staff to the council president, I have long felt the call to public service. Last year, I was proud to be part of the council doing the work of holding this city together during one of its most challenging periods in history. As your council member, I will prioritize pandemic recovery that supports small businesses and our arts, music, and cultural communities that are the vibrant backbone of our city. I am committed to reimagining our entire criminal justice system, not just sentencing and policing, and doing the hard work of building trust between communities of color and law enforcement. I will champion building a sustainable Seattle that's affordable, transit connected and accessible and allows seniors to age in place with respect and dignity. Seattle deserves compassionate and effective leadership to navigate these unprecedented times. I'm running for Seattle City Council because it's time for real results, not just rhetoric, lifting all of our neighbors up and making sure no one is left behind. I humbly ask for your support. My name is Lindsay McAfee and I am running for Seattle City Council position nine. I believe I would be a good fit for the job because I have experience being low income struggling with systemic oppression. If a person is behind on their child support payments, the state will suspend the person's driver's license. How is that person supposed to get to work to make their payments if they can't drive to work? New roads being built are getting tolls added onto them. The Highway 99 tunnel was built to replace the viaduct. A toll has been added on so now only people who can afford to pay can use it. This is a vivid example of class disparity that the city is supporting. Victimless crimes exist solely for the purpose of generating revenue, but the people being targeted with these laws are forced to choose between paying fines or caring for their families. Much like our elderly living on fixed incomes being forced to choose between their necessary medications or food. I believe that government should not make laws that complicate life. People should be free to be true to themselves regardless of how others feel about it. Laws need to be written to, with maintaining the people's freedoms as a first priority, not how much money can be generated from taxes. Seattle needs to learn to live within its means. The city is literally crumbling down around us all, and everything being done from my standpoint is done reactively. It is time to start being proactive about our city and all of the people living within it. The struggle is real, and it doesn't have to be. With your help, I believe we can revive this dying city and build it back greater and more affordable than it was before. In the last year, Seattle has had a reckoning with racial inequality, a battle with a devastating pandemic, and is facing a continued climate crisis. The question before Seattle voters is straightforward. Will we continue to rely on the policies of the past, many of which brought us to this point, or is it time for a fresh perspective rooted in community care? I'm Nikita Oliver, I use they them pronouns, and I am running for Seattle City Council's citywide position nine. I'm an artist, adjunct professor at Seattle University School of Law, an executive director, and an attorney who has supported clients through school exclusion, eviction, and anti-discrimination cases. When elected, I will govern with a conviction that those most impacted by the problems facing our city are those who have the solutions we most need. A vote for the Nikita for Nine campaign is a vote for a city that embodies racial and economic justice. A city with labor protections for freelancers and prevailing wages and health care for frontline workers. A city that enacts progressive revenue to build housing for all and meet basic needs of residents. A city that takes bold action to address the climate crisis, including working towards free transit and reforming a zoning code that restricts our supply of affordable housing, forcing longer commute times between work and home.
My campaign has garnered more democracy vouchers than any other position nine race because we've built community power from the ground up, from the south end to the north end, among renters and vulnerable homeowners, seniors at risk of displacement and young people alike. I've been endorsed in this race by UFCW Local 21, SEIU Local 925, author Ijeoma Oluo, Seattle City Council members Tammy Morales and Mike O'Brien, County Council members Girmai Zahalai and Larry Gossett, and Washington State Representatives Kirsten harris Talley and Tara Simmons. With their support and yours, we're going to build the city we say we are, a Seattle where all are welcome and none are excluded. Hi, Seattle. My name's Exton Gunther. In addition to hopefully being your city councilor, I'm a creative, eco-conscious marketer, publicist, business developer, and music maker. I've worked with mayors, councilors, celebrities, and some people endorse me. You can go to my website, exchangunther.com, for specifics. I'm running to represent you because the challenging crossroads we're at demand bold, swift action, well-informed, specific, practical, and sustainable long-term plans. But I haven't heard much of those, so I jumped in. Through my extensive work for the nonprofit Natural Foods and Music Industries, I've formed innovative public-private partnerships that make dollars go further getting stuff done. For decades, politicians here rolled out 10-year end homelessness plans, declared homelessness a crisis, and congratulated themselves for producing hundreds of units of social housing when many thousands were needed. Let's end the inadequate piecemeal approaches. I'll introduce legislation to create a housing public utility district to build the many thousand green, supportive, affordable rental and first-time home buyer units we need throughout Seattle. And our wealthy city must have adequate hygiene stations and public restrooms for all. I have detailed plans. We must overhaul our public safety system, starting with residency requirements. A small, well-trained, elite armed division should only supplement a larger public safety department that addresses the needs of our growing city. We can provide much day-to-day -day safety via bylaw, mental health, and community officers without guns. As the only member on council with significant arts industry experience, I'll work to create housing, financial opportunities, and relief for our music, film, theater, culinary, and other arts creators who define Seattle so much. Let's equip community centers with art and music work studios and commissary kitchens geared especially toward those historically marginalized. And make Seattle Subway's comprehensive subway system vision map a reality, prioritizing humans over autos, and adopt a comprehensive gray water reuse plan. My proposals come with funding mechanisms, so if you want bold systemic change for the better, you have to elect bold leaders. I hope to earn your vote. Seattle is an incredible city, but unfortunately our city leadership is failing us. My name is Sarah Nelson and I'm running because Seattle deserves a city council that keeps its promises. Like you, I've watched with frustration as the city struggles on issues like homelessness and public safety. It's time for a leader that offers real solutions, not the same old ideological rhetoric. I have a track record of putting my progressive values to work to get things done. As former aide to Councilmember Richard Conlin, I worked to pass landmark legislation while ensuring that Seattle delivered on its basic commitments. On City Council, I'll do the same. My focus will be making sure Seattle helps the vulnerable by working with proven service providers using clear and transparent metrics for success. Public safety is also a crucial issue in this race. I strongly support the Black Lives Matter movement's urgent call for police reform, and I don't believe defunding is the answer. We need to commit to keeping all communities safe while holding people accountable for their actions and then make appropriate funding decisions. It's important that every Seattleite can feel confident in a fast, effective response when they call 911. As we recover from the COVID pandemic and as the co-founder of Fremont Brewing, I'll bring the critical perspective of a small business owner to council. I'll also bring the commitment to environmental safety, sustainability and treating people right that Fremont Brewing is known for. I'm proud of my broad base of support. I've got the sole endorsement of the Seattle Firefighters, the Building and Construction Trades Council, iron workers, environmental leaders like Dennis Hayes, former Representative Gail Tarleton, former Seattle City Council members Conlin, Wills, Rasmussen, Drago, and Godden, and many more you can see at my website, sarahforcitycouncil.com. My name is Sarah Nelson, and with your vote, I'll fight for a city council that keeps its promises. Hi, my name is Corey Eichner, and I'm running for Seattle City Council, position nine. I know that I'm a new face in Seattle politics, and that is because I have spent my career as an educator. For the last 18 years, I've gone to work every day, serving our youth as a teacher, 
and assistant principal in our public schools. I have proudly served our students across our communities, from Shoreline to South King County, where I have fought for reform and investments in our education system to ensure that our students and families furthest from educational justice have the access and opportunities they need to succeed. We are at a critical moment in our city. Inequities continue to exist. We need to advance reform to bring change to our criminal justice system that embraces a system of restoration and not punitive consequences. To act with immediacy and prioritize regional funding that will provide rapid rehousing and support to our neighbors without homes so that we can move them to a path of success. To be transformative with our infrastructure that grows our mass transit and utilizes density planning to actually provide access to affordable housing, new jobs, parks, and public resources. And to finally systemize an action plan to combat climate change and the environmental impacts our decisions have on the future. We all know these are not new challenges to us. Even though most of our city government shares similar progressive values, there is a polarization that stops collaboration and progress. We need new leaders able to push past this divide. As a city council member, I'll get us back to the basics, equitable and progressive policy that solves problems in a practical, get things done kind of way. Seattle will continue down the wrong direction if we don't change paths. And I know that my fact-based, collaborative approach can show real progress for Seattle. Thank you, and I ask for your vote. Seattle School Board. The Seattle School Board adopts the policies that govern Seattle public schools. The board provides direction for the educational program. The seven directors represent different areas of the city. Directors are nonpartisan and serve four-year terms. Just three of the seven district seats are up for election this year. Now, just for the primary, only those who live in each school board district are eligible to vote for candidates in that district. The top two vote-getters in each district will advance to the general election. At the general election, all voters in Seattle will have the opportunity to vote for one candidate from each district. A thriving and just society owes equal opportunity to all, and that cannot be achieved without quality, inclusive education. I know this firsthand as a child of immigrants who came to the United States with literally nothing, just $500 in their pockets. From my beginnings as an English as a second language student, whose hearing disability was identified by a teacher, I received a quality public education and am the first woman in my family to graduate from college. Public education transformed my life. I'm a private sector professional with over 15 years of experience in finance and operations and have a master's in business administration from Harvard Business School. For more than 25 years, I've had deep civic engagement with volunteer work and youth programs, particularly ones in immigrant communities. Of most importance to me, I'm a mother of four children, current and future Seattle public school students. In my capacity, serving on the Superintendent's Parent Advisory Council and as a PTSA president, I've spent many hours advocating in partnership with other parents and stakeholders in local and state forums. And as I attended more and more school board meetings, I realized there was an opportunity for me to better serve our community. I bring a diverse background, finance and management expertise, and a genuine desire to work collaboratively for greater opportunity and outcomes. Among my priorities as director are, making real progress on real inclusion, establishing mental health as an essential service of schools, supporting working families with transportation, and committing to good governance and decision-making through authentic community engagement and leveraging my financial and operational skills. I seek to help our community recover from the pandemic and become stronger than ever. I'm proud to be endorsed by the 36th District Democrats, State Senator Reuben Carlisle, former school board directors Eden Mack and Kay Smith-Bloom, and other community and education leaders in Seattle and Washington State. I'd be honored to have your support and vote. Thank you. Hi, my name is Laura Marie Rivera. 
As a mother and a lifelong learner and an educator myself, I can tell you that I truly believe in the power of education. A quality public education is the greatest gift we can give our children. It opens up the door for a brighter future and gives our students the skills they need to succeed. We owe this to them and to our society as a whole. As an educator, it is always my goal to get my students to success. Now I know that success may look different for each student, but they all have so much potential. Whether I'm teaching a kindergartner how to write the number five or a teenager how to do a time step, it's all about breaking it down into manageable pieces. Down, around, across, or stamp, hop, step, flap, ball, change. See? And you can't help but smile when you get it right. This is the success that I want all of our students to have, a quality education and the best prospects for their future. This includes opening up the options for more technical schools and opportunities with our local businesses, innovators, and the arts. All services must be delivered equitably and effectively, 100% inclusive, and center on each individual student's needs. Educational justice may be the most important issue of our time. Without solving this public crisis, we cannot give our students their best shot at the American dream. Just like teaching in the classroom, we need to break down these systems into manageable pieces and create a structure that can work for all. As a family with special challenges, we have learned how difficult it can be to navigate the system and advocate for your child. I would like to use my experiences as a parent, a teacher, and a member of our community to advocate for all of our children. This attention to our students means graduation and success. If I am elected as a Seattle School Board Director, I pledge to listen and to learn and to make the best possible choices for our students. I'm Laura Marie Rivera, and I would be proud to have your vote. My name is Erin Dury, and I was recently appointed to the Seattle School Board to ensure our schools truly serve all students. I am a change maker with a proven track record of system change through centering community voice. I'm a proud single mom and until my appointment served as a regional PTSA leader representing Northwest Seattle and a classroom volunteer. I've dedicated my career to children and families leading a statewide court-appointed special advocate program to advocate for youth and child welfare and a Seattle helpline supporting vulnerable families. Now as a consultant, I help nonprofits break down racially based structures and barriers. My goal is to build a citywide educational community with a commitment to transparency and continuous communication. We must listen carefully to the voices of youth and families in order to create educational programs that serve individual learning and growth needs. Together we can ensure that every student leaves Seattle Public Schools confident in their value and abilities. With your support, I will continue to center our educational priorities and po policies to focus on making education accessible and targeted to all students particularly black and brown students, students furthest from educational justice, students with disability, and LGBTQ youth who have been systematically marginalized. As a school district and city, we must protect and uplift those most at risk falling through the cracks while reforming structures that marginalize or exclude. In an innovative city like Seattle, I know we can do better and do right by the students from all walks of life and lived experience. Thank you. Hello, my name is Crystal Snow Liston. I'm a gay disabled parent of two stepsons who attend West Seattle schools and a member of your community who is very passionate about our public schools. I'm so passionate, in fact, that I've made it my mission to volunteer in every school in our district as I do not understand how a board member can govern a body of people they know nothing about. As of the 2018-2020 school year, I have volunteered in 20 of our 102 schools. And as a volunteer, I have noticed a disconnect in our school community as a whole. The reason I'm running for school board is to lead a paradigm shift where schools interact and communicate with one another. A shift where the Seattle community is held accountable to participate and nurture our schools. A shift where school board members are active in the various schools and communicate to their students, parents, and teachers. Instead of telling schools what they should be doing, we need to ask, we have resources, what do you need? 
Another aspect of our school district that has become clear to me is the lack of equity. Why do some schools have banned instruments for students but others don't? Why are social workers not in all of our schools to support our students with trauma and our faculty who need support from their administration? Why is the current school board chosen to lay off school librarians? Why, as a progressive city, are we still teaching a white-controlled curriculum? I'm a firm believer that our values are in our budget and our current school board is failing to represent our community's values. Maybe you're asking yourself, what qualifies you to be on the board? My response is this. I can give you a list of my college degrees. I have two. I have one trade school certificate. But what qualifies me to be on the board is that I'm a parent and I'm also a professional volunteer. And what is a Seattle school board member? An unpaid volunteer. So in conclusion, if you're part of the movement for change, then be vulnerable and courageous and vote for me, Crystal Snow Liston. Be bold, the mighty forces will come to your aid. Goethe said that. Hi, I would like to do a descriptive introduction for people who may have access needs. My name is Michelle Sarju. I'm African American and I'm wearing all black. I'm a 34 year Central District resident and I'm running for school board director for the children and youth of Seattle Public Schools District 5. As a former foster parent and the mom of three former Seattle Public School students, I'm running because I believe every student, and I do mean every student, should have access to a high quality public school education. Far too often, variables like race, zip code, and socioeconomic status determine who has access to a high quality and equitable education. We are now presented with an opportunity to make the necessary changes that can result in all SPS students being able to thrive. Some of my high level priorities are creating policies that will support the emotional and mental health of our next generation of leaders, our students. Ensuring that effective policies and programs are established and in place to support the return of all SPS students in the fall. Creating and installing evidence-based assessment strategies that demonstrate what our students have actually learned and retained. It is time to move away from standardized testing to strength-based assessments. I'm excited about what SPS can be for all of our students, and I'm looking forward to partnering with you all to make that happen. Thank you for supporting my candidacy for Seattle Public Schools School Board Director, District 5. You've just seen all the video statements recorded by the candidates that appear on Seattle primary ballots. For King County and Port of Seattle candidates and issues, watch the King County version of the Video Voter's Guide. We will produce another Video Voter's Guide for candidates who advance to the November general election. This program is a collaboration of the Seattle Ethics and Elections Commission, the Seattle Channel, and King County TV. This will be a vote-by-mail election. Ballots will be sent to all registered voters. Look for your ballot in the mail after July 14th and vote and return it on or before Tuesday, August 3rd. Remember to sign the envelope with your voted ballot. To learn about accessible voting options, go to kingcounty.gov slash elections. Ballots can be returned via U.S. mail or at one of King County's secured ballot drop boxes. Ballots must be postmarked by August 3rd. You can track the progress of your ballot online and find the location of drop boxes by visiting King County Elections at kingcounty.gov slash elections. Thank you for joining us. We'd like to hear from you about the Video Voter's Guide. To comment on this guide, please call 206-684-8500.